Hello, my YouTube world. This is Johnny Mo coming to you today with a product comparison review. So we have in this corner, we have the Toro Z Master 5000 series. In this corner, we have the Ferris IS 2100Z. So we're going to compare build quality, comfort, hillside stability, engine power, fuel economy, and cut quality. So let's start it off with build quality. So looking at the Ferris build quality for the IS2100 is you got small tubular steel, small tubular steel, huge tubular steel. This thing is built like a tank. The deck is pure seven gauge. This is 10 gauge double reinforced in some areas. So having said that, Toro wins hands down. The build qualities, it's not even close. Toro crushes Ferris 2100 and all Ferrison and all fair to ferris to get the build quality like that you'd have to move up to a 3100 which says something about toro and their build quality when you can get this kind of build quality in a 3000 series or a 5000 series and you get this kind of build quality in a ferris now let me go ahead and tell you that i've owned three ferrises in 22 years i've never had too much issues with them i have welded them I've had to weld them once the hours piled up on them. I've had to weld the back corner. I will show you this back corner right in here. This plate right down in here would, I don't know if you can see that, but it would, it would break and I'd have to weld that. Uh, other than that, no issues. I've never had an issue with the deck. You know, they, they say, oh, this is only 10 gauge steel. You know, that's seven gauge. It, it's just built better, but it doesn't mean that 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 build there stinks so i just want to make that clear never had an issue i can't say that oh this this mower is just built so terribly don't buy it i'm not saying that just saying that the build quality is not even close it goes to the toro let's move on let's go to comfort there's nothing else to say this beats it the z master it's come a long way with those rubber mounts the beautiful seat that's the best seat in the game i love that seat I loved it so much I put it on my Ferris last year. I, nothing bad to say about the seat, but Ferris with the springs, guys, I, I just, it's not close. I mean, it's just, Ferris just has it. I don't think anyone's gonna catch him until the patent runs out. It's just a phenomenal, phenomenal mower as far as comfort wise. You got a bad back, this is the mower. This is comfortable. It's comfortable enough for me, but when you're comparing the two, it's just really not a comparison in my in my estimation so horsepower this is a 25 efi this is a 28 efi horsepower and power and torque goes to the vanguard over the kohler uh, i like that engine it, it seems to run very well for me no issues at all out of that engine uh, no vapor locking, no nothing. Same thing with this. There's been no vapor lock in 45 hours. There's been no vapor locking, no issues with that engine. Um, the power and torque, I'm going to put to this side, though. It's just, it, it's got a little bit more torque. Uh, as far as fuel economy, this engine is outstanding. That engine is just, and I know it's a 25 and that's a 28, but it's still a noticeable difference in fuel economy. Whereas this one, I put 12 gallons in and it can go almost all week. It, it can almost go all week before I have to fill up. And that's impressive because I had to fill up one, two, three, four, four times with the 36 Vanguard. With the 36 Vanguard, I have to fill up four times cutting the same route. Um, I have to fill up one, two, about two times this. So it, it's, it's better than the 36 Vanguard. But this, for some reason, is just phenomenal gas mileage. Compared to the 36 Vanguard Snapper Pro, it, it's saving me almost $100 in gas alone. So it almost can make a payment if you had a payment on it. So the Toro wins fuel economy. The 28 EFI has more torque. So I don't know what you want to, however you want to say it. If I had to pick the engine, I would go with that engine just because of the, the, the extra torque. So let's go hillside stability. Again, not even close. This is like a billy goat. 
I feel so comfortable. I'm not nervous on any heel. That I'm constantly sliding. And it just, as you see what I had to do just to get some weight in the back is I had to put my weight kit back there. So what I did is I strapped the weights to the back to give it a little bit more weight behind the machine. It, it allows me to get on some hills, but it, it's just, it's just not comfortable. It slides a little bit more. Whereas that one is just, and, and the noticeable difference I think is the gas tank is underneath the seat and these have saddlebags. That's probably what the difference is. Now I've heard the 3100 is like, it's like a billy goat too, but hillside stability goes to that. Now we're gonna get to cut quality. This is where we're gonna split some hairs here. Cut quality between the two. So 80% of cutting is done between 10 and six o'clock at night. The grass is a little bit drier. And even if it's high, the turbo force wrecks the ICD deck. You're gonna do less double cutting in those conditions against the ICD deck. I cut, I saw, I double cut more with the ICD deck than I do with the Turbo, Turbo Force deck. Now, here's where it gets sticky. The ICD deck, if you get stuck and it's a rainstorm and you gotta finish in the storm, you're gonna throw a lot less clumps out of that than you will with that. That deck right there will throw some clumps. That deck throws less clumps. Here's how I like to say it. So let's say we start at 8.30 in the morning. We're cutting a high fertilized, dewy, wet lawn. Let's say it's eight, nine, 10 inches. And I had to choose between these two decks to go do it. It's gonna be that deck for sure. This deck right here. What happens is, and, and I figured out why it happens, but it just makes a mess not as a big as mess as an X mark, it just takes longer. So we're, in, let me go back, 8.30 in the morning, we pulled up to a lawn, we're getting ready to uh, cut the lawn, okay? So let's say in an X mark deck, you ultra cut, you cut circle passes, you cut the border, then you start getting it. About the fourth pass in, you notice the clumps are coming now. The clumps are coming and you see that it's gonna be a messy property. Well, about the seventh pass will be the Z Master start clumping. About the eleventh pass, the ICD deck. So, in those conditions, that deck's going to just do a, a little bit better of a job. Now, this is the reason. And if Toro's watching this, maybe they can, maybe they can chime in, and I could tell you why. So, right here, we have this piece comes right here. Now, this is filled with grass right now. Not that big of a deal. But in wet conditions, there's like a little space here. So if I took this grass out, there's a little space here. And what happens is the grass builds up right here, and then it just builds up, builds up, and boom, drops clumps. Boom, 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 especially in wet grass, where the ICD deck is straight out the side. It never does that, it never gets caught up on that. And and so the this piece here, which they call turbo baffle, comes straight across, and then it hits like a lip. This should be flush with this like this. I think in wet conditions, this is where the grass builds up and that's where you get the clumps. Also right here, because it's a, there's a, there's a, a channel here for this baffle to move back and forth. Well, this channel builds up with grass in wet conditions too. And I think that's the second place that the issues start with uh, clumping. So we have this channel here, it clumps up and you have this that's not all the way to the end of the deck. And there may be a scientific reason why that's not. I just don't know what it is. That's my concerns. Now, let's say, let's say that you wanted to cut, you wanted to cut two foot high grass, three foot. You had to go brush hogging. I would choose the ICD deck only because it has a larger opening and it gets that grass out of there. This grass still processes grass in that blade center and that blade center, which causes too much buildup under the deck, causes too much torque to be required, which does not make this a good uh, brush hogging mower. ICD has a beat. So my final conclusions. If I'm cutting dry grass, 10 o'clock to six o'clock, I'm grabbing this all day. If I'm cutting 10 inch grass, Cutting it down to three and a half, 
and that's doing it, I'm choosing that. Better cut, cleaner cut, better lifting cut. Uh, that has a decent cut, but the lifting cut on that is much better. Leaves a lot less stragglers. Um, the Turo Turboforce deck is a phenomenal deck in semi-wet to dry grass. Normal cutting week to week, the Turbo Force beats it. But when you get into some extreme ex conditions, I would choose the ICD deck. So that there is my conclusion of the two mowers. I hope I haven't forgot anything. So it really is up to you. It really is up to you. If, if comfort is your issue, it's gonna be that. If, if cut quality, and you get just enough comfort to justify that mower. You really do. But here's the kicker, and I'm gonna answer it for you. Is that worth $1,500 more than that? No, it isn't. That's not the case. That is, is that $1,500 better than that? I don't think so, but that's up to you to decide. I own both, so it's no big deal. So in different circumstances for different places, for different folks, you would choose either or. But that's, that's the ability to, to compare apples to apples. And I think that's a, a good quality review of both machines. A guy with 22 years experience. And here's the thing. When you have people demoing machines and they, they don't have the experience, they've only owned one brand. I want to remind you that I've owned six Toros, seven if you count the diesel that I took back. I've owned three X Marks. I've owned three Ferrises, three Snapper Pros. We're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars, like over $100,000 in zero turns in 22 years. I can't even count the amount of hours that I've put on one of these things. So that's the difference. When you're comparing a zero turn, like, you can't compare a zero turn that has a 37 Vanguard and put it up against uh, a Ferris, which only has a, you know, a 28 EFI. Of course, they're not going to cut the same. Of course, there's not going to be that, that extra torque to get through the high stuff. If I put that in a field like Brian did against that Vanguard, it, it would look stupid. The skag would kill it, you know? And, and that's the thing, you really have to watch on, on what you're watching and what you're looking at. These two are a fair comparison. They're mid-mounts, they're smaller, similar engines. That's where you get your good, your good um, reviews at. You don't get a good review of, of using a 37 Vanguard versus a 18 horsepower Husqvarna. That had no, that had no no chance in that field. That, that mower should have never been in there. In that video, when you go look at Brian's um, review of that, that's just a shame. That, that had no chance of cutting any of that field down. Wasn't made for that, couldn't do it. And these are the reviews that we need. We need to hold these companies accountable, not just be so nicey nice to them, but be, make them accountable. Make them accountable for the products they put out for the end user. And, and I'm, I'm gonna finish up by saying this, the Toro company, you know, when it came out with Horizon and the red technology, these companies, they knew that there was an issue. They knew that there was an issue with the engines malfunctioning because it was getting too hot. And all these end users were spending all this time in the garage and they couldn't figure out one week it was this, it was this error code and a month later it's this error code. And, and, and no one was telling us what was wrong with it. And then, to come to find out, it's because the engine was heating up. They put the 15W50 motor oil in it to help it try to keep it cool. But they were having engine malfunctions, and they never did anything about it. And they just they let it fly. Why? Because it would have been too much money to recall all the engines, to refit the, all the mowers. They said, hey, listen, let's try to cool these off the best we can and deal with the... Because some bean counter probably sat up in the office and said, hey... You know, that's the kind of stuff that we have to hold them accountable to. We're not, did they care that the guy that bought the red technology and the horizon technology, did they care that they spent hours and hours and hours at the dealer week after week, month after month? No, they didn't care. Hey guys, that's my rant. That's my time. Have a good one.